Hey, so what's going on everyone? So the original plan for this week was to do a vlog and a haul video for one of my Comic-Con appearances. Unfortunately, we're in January, it's winter, it snowed. And snow means that people can't get out, so the event got rescheduled. Leaving me without my planned content for this week. So I thought I would go on ahead and do a different video and I was trying to figure it out what would be a good video to talk about and I've been asked before about why did I start doing Comic Cons. So I was like, all right, you know what? Might as well talk about this one. So we're going to talk about how I got into being a vendor at Comic Cons and why I still continue to do them. So in 2018 was the year that I went from writing my books as under my real name of Luke Wood to writing under my pen name of C.L. Williams. And I was trying to just step out of every comfort zone and exceed all my boundaries possible that year. In 2018, I released four books and re-released another one. And I started doing anthology appearances. And I was trying to figure out something else I could do to get my name out there. And there was a Kickstarter that I was backing at the time. And it was a comic book related one. And with Kickstarter, like most websites, when you back something, Kickstarter is going to recommend other ones because Kickstarter does make a little bit of money from each of these Kickstarters. And they had one for a Comic-Con. And the Kickstarter was Make Fairfax Comic-Con a Thing. A reality, I think. I forget the exact wording. I'll have the title or something from the Kickstarter because even though it's been years and that's uh, over with, you can still go on the website and check it out. But I live in Virginia and there is a Fairfax, Virginia. So I did check. I was like, all right, well, if this is a Fairfax, Virginia thing, then yeah, I'll absolutely go on there and See if I can do something to help back it. Even if I don't go, I'm helping something in the state where I live. So I go on there and lo and behold, Fairfax, Virginia. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to back this. Let me see what the options are and just go from there. I started scrolling down. I was looking at some of them. And one of them said, be a vendor at our Comic-Con. Now, at this time, I want to say my novel, The Escape of Ernest Frost, had just come out. So I was like, all right. Technically, you know, there are horror fans that go to these things. Dream Awake is a full-on horror title. I can have that completed before this convention. And I've got Three Crowns, which is one of my best-selling books. It's like, all right, let me message the guy and I'm going to tell him what I've got and see if he's okay with it. So I sent him a message and I asked, I said, hey, I'm not a comic book writer, but I am a genre author. Would it be all right to do the vendor tier for your Kickstarter? So I sent the message and I wasn't really expecting a response or anything. I think I sent it on like a Saturday afternoon. Most people aren't home on Saturdays. So I'm like, all right, cool. I go back to doing whatever I was doing at the time, which was probably doing some work on Dream Awake or what ended up being my final release of that year, which was the next step. 
And I get a message probably like 15 minutes later. Hey, absolutely. Thank you for being interested in the convention. That was quick. I don't think anything of it. I click the tier, back it. All right. I guess I'm now going to be selling my books at this convention. And I posted something on Facebook about it. And I posted something on my author page. I don't remember if I posted anything on Twitter. And at this time, I wasn't really active on Instagram like I am now. So I posted something on my personal Facebook page. Hey, I'm going to be a vendor at a Comic-Con in August. To which, you know, I got a lot of responses, a couple of congrats from some of my writing buddies and... Then I got another response from someone else like, hey, you live near this area. Why aren't you signing up for any of these? I was like, uh, I didn't know it was a possible thing until about half an hour ago, which was pretty much my response. I didn't think that this was going to be an option. So... I check with the person that messaged me and was like, hey, you, I know that you live in this area. Why haven't you signed up for this one? It's like, well, I can sign up for it. So I fill out the application, send it. And then I also get another message on my author page. Hey, we saw that you backed this one. You're going to be a vendor. That's really cool. We're in the same area as this convention. And we're going to have a table at it. Do you want to come to our convention? I was like, uh, when is your convention? Theirs was a little too early for me because at that time, I didn't think I was going to be selling my poetry books. I thought, come August, I'm going to have three books on this table and I'm just going to see how it goes. So I told the person, like, hey, I can't do this one this year, but if, you, if you're doing it next year, I'll absolutely sign up. To which he gave me the link to sign up for the following year. It's like, okay. I guess I'm going to be doing an event the following year too. Cool. So... For the most part, that's actually it. That's what led to me doing more conventions. I made one, I made two posts across both my personal Facebook page and my author page, which then led to other people that also run conventions, either people that knew me personally and knew where I lived or from people that were in the same area as the one that I'd already signed up for. As far as me selling everything I've been a part of, that kind of was an evolving thing. Fairfax Comic Con ended up being my second Comic Con appearance. My first one being Big Lit Comic Con, which is the one that's closer to where I live at. And at the time when I did that one, it was just a one-day festival. Now it's become a two-day one. And this year, they're going to start having the doors open a little bit longer on Sundays. So, I'm getting ahead of myself. When I did the one-day event, I only had my three books with me, which were Three Crowns, The Escape of Ernest Frost, and Dream Awake. So, I had those three up. And there was someone who came by my table and was like, hey, I just looked at your stuff. How come you don't have your poetry books? Uh, uh, let me check my table. Let me check my boxes under my table and I'll sell you a copy if I've got one. And lo and behold, I did have a handful of copies of Meta on me. I was like, it's not my newest one, but I do have a copy of my one of my older poetry books, and I gave it to them at a discounted price. So, 
person bought the book from me. And that was when one of the guys that runs the convention was like, hey, uh, why is that not on your table? I was like, uh, well, I was going off the assumption people would want the genre and the horror stuff, not poetry. More specifically, it's not really... In my mind, I didn't think that my poetry was something that would be sought out from the crowds that normally go to Comic-Cons. Even as someone who does go to these things, I'm not, when I go as a fan, I'm not going thinking, hey, I'm going to buy all these poetry books. I go thinking, I'm going to see if they got some cool toys, and I'm going to see if I can get an autograph from whoever the guest is, and I'm going to look for some of those missing back issues that I don't have. That's what's usually going on in my mind. And I made the same assumption that that's how it was going to be for other people. I didn't expect people to be asking about my poetry books. Well, I found out I was wrong at the very first convention. And at Fairfax, I made sure to have more copies of Meta and I ordered copies of the Paradox Complex. And... The Paradox Complex was what led to me meeting one of the other people that I have featured on the channel before. Meta was my best-selling book at that convention. Yes, I've mentioned in previous videos it's my best-selling book out of all my books, but at this particular convention, more people were interested in Meta than they were the other books. So one of the things that I've learned was with some of these two-day events, People were probably grabbing my cards at the beginning of the event or on the first day and then either later on in the first day or even the second day they'd come back after they've looked me up, see what they think, and then pick up something. And in my case, Three Crowns was the only genre book that was really doing anything. The Escape of Ernest Frost you know, there was people like, oh, that's cool. You got a novel out. That's nice. And Dream Awake had just come out, so it didn't really get enough time for people to be giving responses to it yet. So when people were looking me up when I was at Fairfax, they saw award-winning poems, poetry books with five-star reviews on Amazon. That was the first year I took part of the... Uh, Twitter haiku challenge. So they go on my Twitter page and they're seeing haiku after haiku after haiku. So it ended up being a thing where people were showing interest in wanting to pick up Meta and the Paradox Complex over Three Crowns, The Escape of Ernest Frost, and Dream Awake. Which, I mean, for me it was cool either way because it was people still showing interest in my work they were still showing interest in what I do. No, they weren't buying the most recent book, but at the same time, they were still showing interest in what I was working on. So I was like, all right. So for me, it was still a win. As far as the one thing I know a lot of other people that might want to do a vendor job is wondering is... Do I make decent money at these? And the truth is, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. The very first one I did, that was a one-day thing. I only had three books, but I still managed to make my money back and then some. With Fairfax, the vendor fee was a little bit higher because, one, Northern Virginia has got a higher cost of living than Southern Virginia. There was also the fact that my most expensive book was $8. So at the end of the day, I was pretty much like this much over my break-even point. But at the same time, that was a lot of people that were buying just about every book. And I did a lot of networking. I met people up there that I still keep in touch with. The person who runs Fairfax Comic Con I'm still scheduled to be a part of some of his events in 2022. So even then, it wasn't a 100% loss. 
believe me, I've had some where I, there was one event I went to, it was a three day event. The first day I didn't sell a single book. I think I may have handed out a couple of cards, but overall not a great experience. And I've been to another event where the person at the table right next to me was telling people not to come to my table because I didn't have novels on my table. So yeah, I've had negative experiences, but overall it has been more and more of a thing where I have been making money from these. Sometimes you just gotta weather the storm. Like the event that I was supposed to go to this weekend, I did this event back in July and I made a pretty nice profit. The very last event I did before lockdown happened, I did really well. So a couple of things for anyone that does want to eventually like look at doing comic cons as a means to get their name out there. A couple of things I can tell you. One, have a back catalog. Me having a back catalog has been my best friend on some of these. Yes, it's cool that I'll have a brand new book right there and be like, hey, this just came out. But as many independent authors know, the just came out new release doesn't always have the most reviews because it just came out. And let's be honest here, some of our readers are going to check out the major published authors first. So when people are looking me up, they don't see, like at the time when I was at Fairfax, Dream Awake didn't have any reviews. It had only been out two or three weeks at that time. But... The Escape of Ernest Frost had multiple five-star reviews. The Paradox Complex had multiple five-star reviews. Meta had multiple five-star reviews and features an award-winning poem. Three Crowns. Mixed reviews, but for the most part, positive. So keep that in mind. Like, Don't just have your newest book up and try to push just that one book. Another thing, one of the things that's helped me, but also been, it's a mixed bag, are anthologies. While most publishers are fine with you featuring their books, definitely ask first because I have been told no by a couple of different publishers. Sometimes when people are looking at your table, they're there for you. They're not necessarily there for the book featuring everyone. So don't get me wrong, like some of the events I've been to, I've been part of a Christmas book that sold really well. I was in an Area 51 book that does really well. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that are looking at what I'm doing specifically. Like at my very last event I did before the end of 2021, yeah, people loved Eerie Christmas because we're in October and Christmas is not that far away. People like the horror anthologies because one of them was a Halloween theme one and Halloween was a couple of weeks away. But at the end of the day, people were looking at Tales from the Forbidden Forest. They were looking at Meta. They were looking at the Paradox Complex. It's still a thing of you're there promoting yourself. As far as knowing when to double down and try again and when not to try again on certain events, it's just kind of a gut call. Just trust your gut on that one. Like Every year that I'm at Big Lake Comic Con, I do pretty well. So I know to go back to that one every time. Fairfax, I didn't necessarily do horribly the first go round. But the only reason I didn't go back was because I got double booked the following year. And as far as doing other events, let me just tell you that I have pretty much went to two or three events and I get asked by other people, hey, I run this event. You want to stop by that one? 
that happens at almost every single convention I've been to. So as far as like me being able to go from doing one or two a year to, I think I did nine or 10 in 2019 before everything shut down. It was a thing of, I go to one event and I leave with numbers from three different people. So if this one's a success and these three are interested, then I'm looking at four. And that pretty much happens at every convention I've been to. There's only one or two I've been to where that has not been the case. So do want to keep in mind that you do have to pay a vendor fee at most of these. Yeah, there's a few that are free or almost non-existent. It's not the case with every single convention, though. The people that run these still have to make their money, and they're not necessarily making money from someone buying something from the random person that is there selling arts and crafts. They've also got fees that they've got to cover on their end. I don't know how much help this is going to be for those that are interested in or toying with the idea of possibly doing conventions. And I will say, while it's been good for me, I do know others that have not been as fortunate. And again, I've had conventions where I haven't been the fortunate one. It's just a thing of trust your gut. Simple as that. But that is going to do it for this video. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below if there's anything that you've seen that you would like me to talk about more for some of these discussion videos. I definitely noticed that these videos still tend to do better than my haul videos and my vlogs. So, let me know what you want me to talk about. I do want to say this now for those that have been asking for discussion videos regarding Meta, Three Crowns, and the Paradox Complex. We got milestones to reach before I talk about those because those are going to be the ones that I know are going to be... Those are the ones I'm saving for special occasions. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.